This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and today we're here to review NASCAR Heat 5 by 704 Games along with Motorsport Network. NASCAR Heat 5 is the most official NASCAR title there is, and that means it features all the cars, the tracks, the paint schemes, the real-life drivers of the NASCAR Cup Series, the Xfinity Series, the Truck Series, and even their fictitious Extreme Dirt Modified Series. It features 29 real-life NASCAR tracks along with all the real-life branding that goes along with it. They have a selection of dirt tracks along with even a dirt road course for the Modified Series, which is somewhat strange. The game features the life of a real-life racer from the very bottom working their way up against the big boys in the Cup Series. That means you can drive as or against your favorite drivers in all of NASCAR. NASCAR Heat 5 is available on the PlayStation, the Xbox, as well as the PC, which is my preference and the version that we'll be testing. Now, NASCAR Heat as a franchise goes all the way back to 2000, and it was originally made by Monster Games along with Hasbro. The next three editions were made with Monster and 704 Games, and now it's 704 Games along with Motorsport Network, the owner of a million racing affiliated sites including Motorsport Games who run the Le Mans Esports Series, the Codemasters Esport Tournaments, and are also part of NASCAR Heat 5. Now this is my first time really getting deep into the NASCAR Heat franchise, and when I was doing my live streamings, my first testings, viewer after viewer told me how much this was almost identical to NASCAR Heat 4. Now I'm not able to really give you the differences between 4 and 5, all the little nuances and changes between sims, and if you want that opinion, I gotta tell you, the best version that you're gonna find is from Billy Strange Racing on YouTube. He did a perfect video that actually tells you the differences between 4 and 5 and answers that question whether it's a year worth buying or whether it should have just been DLC all on its own. Now in my case, again, it's my first look at the franchise so we're going to be taking a deep dive into the sim, looking at it from a whole and not necessarily noticing the differences between generations but just looking at it on its own as NASCAR Heat 5. Beyond the flashy intro, one of the first aspects of most games ends up being the user interface. How do we navigate? How do we get around the sim? How do we even launch a game? The user interface in NASCAR Heat 5 is pretty straightforward. You have four main headings or tabs for racing, two tabs about your driver and the cars, and then a little more hidden down below are the actual game options. For console players, everything is labeled correctly, and for PC players, it begins the clunky experience of trying to figure out what keyboard commands are mapped to what buttons to be able to navigate fully through the user interface. Within the options, you can make all sorts of adjustments to the game. This can be the difficulty settings like automatic versus manual transmission, the AI difficulty, or another tab where you can adjust driving aids and the individual driving habits of the AI. There are two different player control tabs where you can select gamepad versus steering wheel. And once selected, you can make adjustments to your wheel's rotation and linearity and dead zones. There's an input mapping tab. If you're on a gamepad and you want to change the default controls, you would do it here. Or for wheel users, this is where you can map your wheel controls. I found this easiest if I deleted the previous mappings and started over with my wheel. In the options, you can also make changes to your graphics and your audio. And again, I did find the options or the user interface area of the game to be very difficult to navigate, especially with the steering wheel. It took a while to get the wheel mapped. It took even longer to get the wheel dialed in, but eventually we did get it mostly dialed in and mapped and everything working correctly. Now NASCAR Heat 5 has multiple modes of gameplay. The main focus is clearly on the career mode which is fairly extensive and we will go into that later. There's also a race now tab that will set up a single race. You can change the parameters of your individual race. There's also a race modes tab where you can run a test session, an individual championship, take on challenges, or run split screen against your buddies. In the multiplayer section, you can search for or host an online race, view the leaderboards, or take on online challenges. In addition, there's a section to view and change your driver and also to view and paint your cars. For me, when it comes to a game or a title like this, I'm all about the career mode. And by doing the career mode or diving into it, we'll be able to look at and talk about certain aspects of the game from within. 
Now, when you start a new career, a full career in NASCAR Heat 5, it starts you off in the bottom, that being the fictitious Extreme Modified Tour. It starts off with a very basic driver tar where you put in your name and you change the look of your driver. And then your journey begins. News headlines, a pep talk with your agent, and you're off to the races. In your new late model-ish Extreme Dirt Tour car, it starts off in your garage with a goal time given to you by your team for the first race. You can also set up the car in two ways. There's a slider that changes the car from loose to tight, and for the more engineering types, there's an actual custom setup page with the majority of the adjustments that can be made to a modern oval car. Once happy, it's time to hit the dirt, and I actually started the game with 900 degrees of rotation on my wheel. This caused me to constantly swing in the wheel back and forth, had some tremendous tank slapper moments, and was not very comfortable with the game. It did take a lot of trial and error with the sliders, changing the rotation, changing the sensitivity, changing the degrees of rotation in my wheel until I got remotely comfortable. In the end, in my AccuForce profiler, I was using 360 degrees of rotation, and then I was actually changing the sliders in the game for both rotation and sensitivity in order to get comfortable to the point where I could drive the car with a lot of confidence. So now that we're a little bit more comfortable with our wheel and settings, let's go ahead and hit the track. And I gotta tell you, even at the bottom level, these extreme dirt modified cars, they're beasts of cars. You step on the throttle and there's an immediate roar of the engine. The car launches up to speed, almost lifting the front wheels off the ground. It sways, it bucks, it snorts, and it kicks up a lot of dirt. You can hear the dirt being flung to the underside of the car, adding to the impression of driving on dirt. The car is always trying to drive sideways, and keeping her straight is the first challenge beyond the other cars on the track at speed. The force feedback that is being delivered is attempting to let you know what is going on. The force feedback has a strong center spring and will lighten with the loss of rear traction. The tracks are bumpy and that can be felt in the wheel as well as with contact. Hitting the wall will result in a heavy hit in the steering wheel. However, with that said, I never really got that feeling in the force feedback that I would compare to most simulations. In fact, the force feedback felt about as much of a canned effect as I'd ever felt in a motorsport title. Now, despite the lack of authentic feel, I did start to get the hang of the ride. I was inspired by my spotter calling out the laps and letting me know when I was getting close to hitting my target time. If you hit that time, you are awarded with a bonus and you can move on to qualifying and a new goal time. The qual goal is always way faster than I have ever run and I don't quite understand that, but oh well, I had to get used to mid-pack starting positions and then on to the race. The dirt driving is very gamey and it does not handle like I expect them to. It took a while, but I did figure out the timing and that the low line works and went on to some respectable finishes. The AI are part of the game, on the track and after the race. They will race you hard, they race against each other, and they will run multiple different driving lines on the track. If you crash or bang against the drivers, they will call you out after the race and this will build up rivalries friends, and enemies. The flow of the game is this. You go to a race weekend, you kick butt, you earn money, you taunt your rivals, and then you move on to the next calendar week. Periodically, you're gonna get hot seat offers to get rides in higher level series. And then eventually you'll get offers from better teams, and then even eventually you'll move on to the truck series. Once we switch to the paved track, the game's handling becomes a little more tuned with the force feedback and perhaps even the physics. The car feels a bit more natural while much of the rest remains the same. What was flinging dirt effects are traded for smoke off the tires when the cars get too sideways. The AI continue to race you strong and can be bullied to a whole new level if you want to abuse the game. The career mode stays on a similar track with race weekends of practice qualifying and racing various goals for times or positions at each turn. And again, as you progress, you'll get more hot seat offers, build new rivalries, and earn more money. You can take that money and start your own team, 
or continue on until you take the ride from one of your own real-life NASCAR heroes. As I experienced more of the game, there were a couple of things that did stand out to me about the title. Where are the gigantic crashes that make NASCAR, well, NASCAR? I found that the light damage model, combined with the AI that could just be pushed all over the track and were very resistant to being spun, prevented those giant pileups. But when they did happen, and the caution came out, where are the pit stops? The pit stops are completely controlled by the game. So I could go on and on describing every condition and aspect of the game. I could take a super deep dive into the career mode, which is very extensive, and that alone would take a long time. But to go ahead and make it really easy, let's go ahead and break down by category some of the most important aspects of a sim game, of course starting off with the physics. Now the physics in NASCAR Heat 5 are arcadish and simplistic. The setup changes seem to have an effect on the car's handling, but it's minimal. The way the cars grip the road, the way they corner, it's rooted somewhere based on real life feelings, but it's been simplified mostly in the name of a playable game for most people out there. It is far from a hardcore sim, but it is an authentic enough driving experience for a simcade title. Granted, when driving a track like California, you will feel the bumps all over the track and they'll move the car around. And when heading into turn one, the game trains you to be smooth and let off the gas slowly, or it will upset the car, just the way California is run. It rewards a late apex, and at the same time, if you get on the gas too early, it will induce understeer or a tight situation. Get on the gas too strong, and it will move the rear end with oversteer or a looser car. All on point and in the right direction in a beginner level experience. I found the damage model to be very arcadish. In fact, I could bang the car up pretty well and still run laps that were competitive with my perfect car. To test certain aspects of the physics, I tried not letting off into a corner and diamond cutting the corner. The result, a heavy wall hit and a reduction in power that put me right back in line and going strong. I did this same in turns three and four and despite two heavy hits with the wall, and the added damage, I still ran only a couple of tenths slower than a clean lap. The force feedback in NASCAR Heat 5 is what I would consider to be the low bar for our industry. A combination of rotational or linearity issues, along with effects that aren't all that realistic, leave NASCAR Heat 5 with a very arcadey feel. Certain effects that are requirements of racing are being done, However, they are so generic that they cannot be used so much to get the most out of the car. You will feel the wash out of the front wheels when speeding into corners too fast, and you will feel the recovery of grip when traction is once again found. The off the corner oversteer can be felt, but it is the fault of the force feedback that turn those incidents into tank slapper moments and recovery, hopefully, of the car. The graphics in NASCAR Heat 5 are an interesting combination of good combined with that over-the-top flair that keep it rooted in its arcadey feeling. My system was locked at 60 frames per second with the settings at high running in triples on an i7 with a 2080 video card. The view of the surrounding cards is very good and crystal clear. The tracks are full of detail and they go beyond full and into almost a Forza Horizon over the top movie scene busy at times. But they are good and rather entertaining. In fact, at times, NASCAR Heat 5 is so clear that it actually takes away from some of the speed immersion and makes 200 miles an hour feel like freeway speeds at times. The sounds of NASCAR Heat 5 are also on the good side of things. They definitely add that feeling of being in a thunderous American V8. Still there. All right, you're clear. There are also secondary sounds that add to the game's feel, like tire screech and the banging of fenders. You have a spotter constantly in your ear 
and at times I find him to be a little too vocal and at the same time silent at some of the most critical moments. I found the spotter to be more of an added effect than actually keeping me safe on track. The car models in NASCAR Heat 5 are definitely easy on the eye and definitely give it more of that NASCAR feel. When driving behind others, you can see the individual parts like roll bars, suspension pieces, and even the little arrow wing on the rear. There are a couple of little issues, like at times the tires not looking like they're actually in contact with the ground, and some of the added effects, like the rollover flaps, they're very slow to engage when turned around backwards. It is also the only game that actually has all of the real life cars, car paints, and drivers of the real NASCAR world. The overall track modeling in NASCAR Heat 5 is relatively pretty good for a gamey type title and they're done to a certain level of accuracy, but no, they're not laser scanned to that perfection level. But when you look at a track like California, it drives like California. The entry is like California. The exit of corners is like California. And it's very bumpy all the way around the track. When you drive at Daytona, it drives like Daytona and so on and so on. Off the track, things get a little less authentic as the facilities have been packed to the limit with the busiest looking weekend in the history of each track. But it's also great to see all of the real life NASCAR tracks being used. And with a total of 39 total tracks, there's plenty of depth to the game. We did talk about this a little bit extensively at the beginning, but the user interface in NASCAR Heat 5 is an area that they can definitely fix things a lot. I mean, I think if you're a controller user, a game controller user, you're gonna fare pretty well. Everything's mapped, ready to go out of the gates. But for wheel users, it's still very clumsy, and there might even be scenarios where somebody can't even get to the options menu. It is that difficult in an area they definitely need to improve on. The AI or artificial intelligence in NASCAR Heat 5 is actually one of my favorite parts of the game. I mean, it is plagued by many of the same issues and problems that most sim racing titles have, so hear me out on this one. I mean, yes, you can bully the AI all day long, just push them right out of your way. You can use them as a moving guardrail through the corners. And at times, you can just lean on them all the way down the straightaways in ways that should cause crashes. You can run the AI like a video game and literally smash your way to the front. And for some, that is pure fun. And for many, without driving talent, it will allow them to enjoy the game anyway. But to a sim guy, that is all mediocre and typical of gaming. However, you don't have to race that way. When you race like a real racer, when you actually protect your car, the AI will race you hard. They will try to pass on the inside and the outside. They will run multiple different lines and change their lines to race you. They will always be trying to make a move and the ones that you have angered will give you a bump. At super speedways, the AI stay in a group and at tracks like California, the group will string out as to be expected. And in an arcadish game way, even at 105% difficulty, my car always had magical power and it always had some sort of rubber band effect to keep the racing good and keep me in the action. The career mode in NASCAR Heat 5 is also one of the highlights of the game. It is extensive and it has a nice progression along with those hot seat offers or promotions to higher ranks. And despite the rivals and the friends aspect of the game being very simplistic, it is another layer of fun factor that adds to the game. I like the ability to run for other teams in the known driver's cars, kick them right out of their own ride, or the ability to start my own team. For the NASCAR racing fan, it gives a good feel for the career of a talented new driver and will take many, many days of driving to get deeper into the career. For me, a more casual driver of this game, the career mode admittedly was a little bit long and it was going to take forever to actually achieve the cup level in the game. And I would say it's reserved for only the most dedicated. But then again, that's why they have single player mode. So that pretty much breaks down just about every category, every aspect of this game. And I think the, the general idea at the end is, if you're a hardcore sim racer, 
then this title probably is not going to make you very happy. Now, if you are an experienced racer and you're looking for a diversion game, you're looking for an arcade-style racer that allows you to smash, crash, and bang your way to the front without any penalty or consequences whatsoever, then this might just be for you. And for those looking for a driving experience game without needing to be completely serious, without having a dedicated sim racing chassis wheel and an entire rig, well then this is going to be a good game for you. If you're a fan of NASCAR, you like the authentic cars, the authentic tracks, you like being able to race against your real life NASCAR heroes in game, then this is the only game that really can offer that. And it does a very good job of doing that in that arcade-ish gamey sort of way. This game really ends up being like a modern version. You remember the arcade classic Daytona USA? This is like the in-home game version of NASCAR USA, allowing you to play that total arcade style racer based on NASCAR, do it from your home, and then have a game that's dedicated to give you a career mode that'll last you many, many, many hours of enjoyment versus the little amount of time that you get for a quarter in the actual arcade version. Or another way of looking at it is this game basically is the F1 2020. It's the NASCAR equivalent to what F1 2020 is. You think about F1 2020, you can use that big front wing as a bumper, knocking Formula One cars around with little consequence for your actions. This is very similar, but in a NASCAR flavor. It's built for the hardcore fans that are looking for a semi-realistic driving experience, and NASCAR Heat delivers that well. As this was my first experience with the game, it seemed very solid. But as Billy Strange and many of my live viewers noted, it was really a reboot of NASCAR Heat 4, or something that should have just been DLC. With very little changes in the game, it's not worth jumping into if you own 4. For me as a new player, judging it for what it is, I have to say I think it's really worth the money. They did a good job of delivering an arcade style racer with that NASCAR flair. Now, if the guys behind Heat 5 were listening, if they're asking me my recommendations for the future, I would definitely still be looking for better controller support, linearity, rotation, being able to get it dialed in, more force feedback, maybe something a little more timed with the game instead of those canned effects. I'd love to see more damage and better crashes, giving it a little more of that NASCAR-esque flair. And of course, you can always make the UI work a little bit smoother. So I hope you've enjoyed this review. I hope it tells you everything you need to know from my perspective of NASCAR Heat 5. If you like what we did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe so you can find out about future videos coming soon. But that's going to do it for this one. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole and I'll see you on the track.